1962, a radio telescope looked up at the sky and saw something pretty weird, an extraordinarily bright radio source. It was too bright to be a star, and stars don't emit radio waves like this, but nothing else made sense. The astronomers that discovered this object named it a radio star because they had no clue what it was. A few months later, Caltech astronomer Martin Schmidt was looking at the light coming from one of these radio stars using an instrument called a spectrometer. This instrument split the light into different lines based on their wavelengths, which helped show which elements emitted that light. The spectrum that Schmidt was looking at didn't match any known element, and it wasn't until he realized that the lines were shifted towards redder wavelengths that it could say for certain that the element was actually hydrogen. These shifted lines meant that the object was billions of light years away and moving away from us at incredible speeds. So Schmidt was finally able to show that these objects weren't stars. And he decided to name this new type of object a quasar. Ideas on what these quasars actually were ran wild. Everything from wormholes to stable antimatter was suggested. It wasn't until 1964 that two scientists independently came up with the correct explanation. A supermassive black hole. A quasar consists of a supermassive black hole and a disk of debris that feeds the black hole. As material falls towards the gravity well, the stress increases and energy due to friction is released, which powers the quasar. This causes the quasar to be the brightest object we have observed in the universe, even though it's also the most distant. However, some gas and dust particles are not consumed by the black hole and are instead accelerated away from it with speeds close to the speed of light, creating jet streams of debris both above and below. So quasars are not stars as was originally thought. Rather, they are distant galaxies with extremely bright centers caused by the supermassive black hole phenomena. At first, this idea seemed as crazy as all the others. In 1964, black holes were still a mystery, with many doubting their existence completely. However, over the next 10 years' work by many, including Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose, helped to show that black holes weren't so crazy after all. Quasars fall into the category of active galactic nuclei, which are very bright regions in the center of galaxies caused by supermassive black holes, which can be anywhere from hundreds of millions to tens of billions of times the mass of our own sun, which is much greater than the four million solar mass black hole at the center of our Milky Way. Compare this to black holes formed by the collapse of stars, which only range from 3 to 30 times the mass of the Sun. AGNs fall into three main types. Quasars, blazars, which are a little brighter, and Seifert galaxies, which are not as bright. But really, all three types of objects are the same thing. When viewing the jet streams coming from a black hole, the angle of the streams of the Earth will change how bright the object appears. If they are pointed directly at the Earth, the object is more luminous and is known as a blazar. They are pointed perpendicular to us, they aren't quite as bright and are known as Seifert galaxies. Anything in between is just a traditional quasar. Since their identification in 1963, millions of quasars have been discovered. Not only are they the brightest and the most distant objects in the universe, but they're also some of the best probes for studying the conditions of the early universe. This is Melissa from Active Galactic Videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, comment them in the section below.